Hi, welcome to my channel Mostly Knitting. I'm Tash and it's Thursday the 21st of September and I'm recording from Sydney, Australia. So this is a podcast where I talk mostly about the knitting that I've been doing during the week and anything that I might have learnt from what I've knit and I also post some regular tutorials on um, things that I've learnt and techniques. Right, so I have one finished object for this week and that is the Sophie scarf. So it's quite a small finished object. Um, I used 62 grams and I knit it, um, I used the recommended needle size which is a 3.5 millimeter needle and the yarn is some mystery DK weight yarn. I know it's a wool uh, and I think it's shibui but I'm not 100% sure. So it's about 52 inches long in length so not quite my wingspan, um, although probably if I stretched it out, I could get it that far. And I, I knit the large size, but I knit actually a slightly a little bit larger. The large size goes up to 33 stitches, and I went up to 35 stitches. And it was a really enjoyable, easy knit. I did a lot of it when I was um, walking and knitting and just popped the yarn in my pocket. Now, I haven't worn it yet, and I'm a little bit unsure about how to style it. Um, so like if I wrap it around, like that it's actually quite tall and I mean I know I did two extra stitches but two extra stitches is not a lot um, so it's it's very much an accessory scarf so I mean I guess I could sort of fold that down a little bit um, and I think I guess the length is pretty good maybe those tails are just a tiny bit long so maybe 33 um, 33 stitches or at least getting to the length of 33 stitch increases up to 33 stitches and then back down to six is probably would be about right maybe it would just have them tiny little bit shorter tails so yes maybe that modification was a bit unnecessary um, but I think it's quite a neat little accessory and I've already got another one on the needle so yeah I like it I'm happy with it um, but and I'm, I'm definitely <sighs> I reckon I'm happy with the length, I'd probably just go even like a couple of repeats shorter. So whatever the length is that 33 stitches would have been, that's what I would go for. And I'm also happy with the needle size. And I was a little, you know, I was a bit concerned about the increases, oh, sorry, the um, just the evenness of the I-cord along the edge where the increases were. And that's blocked out completely fine. Like both, it all looks great. So I'm not gonna make any changes as to where I do the increases or decreases. It looks nice. Um, yeah, so, and that's obviously wool um, is, you know, just blocks beautifully. Um, my next one is also wool. So anyway, I'll talk about that um, in my works in progress. So I have two new works in progress. Maybe I'll start with a Sophie scarf. So um, I, uh, this is um, skein, um, I'm trying to think, sorry, was there anything in my um, finished objects that I wanted to mention? Oh, I will mention actually. Um, so I had my in-laws visiting and um, my mother-in-law, uh, Cindy, she is a knitter and she mostly knits washcloths and, um, and koozies because uh, she's a little bit uncertain that, that she'll, um, you know, if there's a, an instruction in the pattern, she'll feel confident to make the change and I'm not there or to, or to be able to work it out and I'm not there to um, to help and um, I think she, she has a local yarn store in town but doesn't you know go there that often um, anyway so um, she started one with some um, Madeline Tosh DK in the colorway posy and I'll put a picture of it up here and she got all the way up to I guess the starting the decreases before she left so she was confident with where to put the increases and putting a marker, because that's what I'll show you what I do to make sure um, my increases are in the right spot. I put a marker and then I know when I've got four stitches above or a multiple of four stitches above, then I'm ready to do an increase. So that's been helpful for me. So if it's four or eight or 12, then I know I'm ready to do an increase and then I just move it up. So this is, um, this is my new work in progress. This is, I think I only cast it on a couple of days ago and maybe I, um, I went for a walk this morning and I was there when I started my walk. And so I got that much done on my um, 6K walk, which is about mm, a bit under four miles. So yeah, it's very easy um, knitting. I was a little bit unsure about like putting, that's a bit big to put in my pocket because that's a f one full skein. Um, so I had this project bag what is it from Tangerine Designs project bag and it has a little um, 
clippy carabiner thing on it. So I just made sure I wore shorts that had a, a belt loop and I clipped that onto it and totally fine. So um, this one I'm doing a little bit differently because I was a bit, um, I felt with the, the height of that was a little bit much or just a bit unnecessary. I thought I'll try what some other people have done where they've increased to 20 stitches. So this is where I think I got to about 20 stitches and then knit even and then decrease down. So the length stays the same, but it's just thinner um, along the middle and not increasing out to a point. So I'll I just thought I'll try 20. And I think from when I looked at other people's projects, it got to about 50 grams. So that would be about half of this ball. And then I just have to think about what to do with the other half. Um, I'm sure I'll find something. So that skein, um, Merino Cashmere, DK in um, the colorway that I over dyed in cherry red uh, writ. So yeah, I think that's really, that's nice. That's a really good um, project that's pretty, like that marker's still in there just so I know, I don't even know if it's really essential. I guess it will help me. So when I get to about, um, cause I, I want to go, I guess I could just work it out from how many rows, if I had have increased up to 33, how many rows would that have been? And then get to that point and then do the same again and then from 20 down. So I just, there'll be a little bit of mathing when I get to the point of like, where do I start the decreases? I suppose I can just actually do it by length, can't I? If I want it to be 48 inches and then I just work out, yeah, that's probably easier. I just work out how long is it from here to here. Mm, let me just grab a tape measure. Yeah, I mean like one or two extra rows here or there doesn't matter. Like this one, my first one was 52 inches. Let's say I want it to be 48 inches and my increases are ooh, about um, eight and a half inches. So if I want it to be about 48 inches, when I get to 40 inches long, oh, but I haven't taken into account blocking. Hmm, that's a good point. All right, I think what I'll do is when I get to what I think is halfway, I'll block it and then see where I'm at. So I'll report back as to how much it actually, how much it actually grew in blocking. So good thing I'm thinking about that first. So, right, so that's my first um, new whip. I have one more new whip, which is not going to stay a whip. It is going to come off the needles as soon as I finished recording. Um, which is a little unfortunate. Um, I did a whole video on my swatching for the Thea top. And so that's the size of my swatch, which isn't massive, but it's also not tiny, right? I'm meant to be getting 20 stitches over four inches and I cast on 30. You know, I think that's pretty reasonable, right? Half as much again. And I was getting on the 3.5 millimeter needle, that was this one, after washing 21 and a half, the swatch, 21 and a half stitches over four inches. Unfortunately, so I did a, I'll tell you what I did with it. This is the Thea Top by Suzanne Mueller. I cast on the required number of stitches. I didn't change anything because I thought with my smaller gauge, I'll end up with 32, 32 inches. But I don't know if you can see, that's, all, that's how wide it is already. And my gauge, because I blocked this, because I could tell this is way bigger and, and looser than my gauge swatch. And it's blocked out to 18, 18, even bigger than the pattern. And so this is a linen cotton blend. I'm really bummed. So um, yeah, 18 stitches and 30, 36, no, 38 rows, like really, really stretched out in width. It's compressed a tiny bit in, um, no, 36 rows. It's compressed a little bit in depth, but it's really stretched out in width. And I just, I'm feeling so discouraged by non-wool fibers. I don't do a lot of knitting with linen or cotton, certainly not garments. I have done, I have done. And I haven't really experienced, mm, actually, now I, now I mention it, I have actually experienced this with things that have grown by like 10%. It's just been such a long time. So anyhow, this is way too big. There's no, for me, this is meant to actually, like this is the back, but it's meant to have ribbing on the side. It's not meant to like come out here. So this all has to get undone. What have I learned from it? I've learned that this yarn on 3.75, this is the Lena, Sandner's Garn Lena, on a 3.75 millimeter needle, 
in a very large amount of knitting, knitting back and forth, I get 18 stitches over four inches. Um, very different to what I get in a swatch. And that happened for me with the silk that blew out from 28 stitches to 24 inches. That was the knitting for olive silk. So this is definitely getting ripped out. Um, one thing I did, the pattern had you do a crochet chain and then pick up into the crochet chain for your provisional cast on, which I didn't really understand. I just did the crochet provisional cast on. Um, I've got a video for that. Um, and that gets you straight on the needles and you're not trying to find your way into crochet um, loops for, for picking up stitches. Maybe it's not that big a deal, but I just didn't really understand that. There are a few other things that were a bit odd in the pattern. Like, um, she gets you to do a garter edge stitch instead of a stockinette edge, sti edge stitch, which, you know, the old patterns that I grew up with that were all seamed, they had that as a, a method, you always knit the, the edge stitch, even if you're on a pearl row. And I, I don't know, I'm quite used to picking up stitches where it's it's just a straight stockinette edge, not a garter edge. So I just kept it the same. She was also in the pattern that instructed you to crochet stabilize around the edges and then go into the crochet stitch to do your edges. I'm not sure how much value there is in that. I mean, I, I think, and I, I forgot to do it here anyway. Um, I was thinking I was going to do it. I thought, oh, I'll try it. And then I forgot because <laughs> it's just such a habit. So yeah, I'm not sure. I would like to do this pattern, but I think I'm going to have to use a different yarn, um, a substantially lighter yarn than the Lena. So I'm just scrapping this. Thea is coming off the needles and I'm not even going to try. I could try and modify the numbers to make it work with an 18 stitch gauge, but it's already too big. Like the smaller size is already too big for me. It's 35 inches and that's with a gauge of 20 stitches. So I think I'm just going to, um, I'm going to use this for something different. So yes, swatches do lie. Um, if, so my video about swatching and sizing, that all works fine if your swatch gauge stays the same in your garment. If it doesn't, well, everything is up for grabs, right? So anyway, that was the theater top um, and I'm going to have to undo that. And yes, think of something else for that yarn. And this is what happens, like you buy yarn for something and you think that's what, that's how yarn ends up in stash and it's sort of, because now what I thought it was gonna be for is not what it's gonna be for. Anyway, enough on that one. Um, other, works in progress. Camisole number five. This one's going well. So um, where I was last week, I had done the neck, the, the neck band, and I was just working down the body. And I only have the one ball. So I was going to just keep working down the body until I was sort of getting towards the end. And then I was going to, I actually did decide, I think I, I thought I would cut the yarn um, and then do the armhole edging. Well, there was a knot in the ball. So given that there was a knot in the ball, I thought, well, that's, you know, fortuitous. It's not really good to have a knot. But anyway, I just thought, well, that's the time to stop then. And um, I'm going to do the double knit around the edging. So I'm just at that point where I'm sort of, uh, sorry, I forgot to tell you all the details on this. Camisole number five, um, by my favorite things and I'm using Volmise Lace Garn in the colorway Schwefel and I'm using a 2.75 mil needle for the body and I used a 2.5 mil needle for the um, for the pickup here around the neckline. I'm not sure if I'll use a 2.5. Also people in the pattern said, oh, sorry, in their project said pick up two out of every three for the neckline instead of three out of four, which I did and that fits well. Um, I haven't noticed the same kind of comment for the armhole though, so I'm not sure whether I should pick up three for four. Karen, are you watching? Did you pick up three for four for the for the um, for the armhole? So yeah, and also whether I should use the 2.5 millimeter needle or the 2.75 millimeter needle. Um, yes, so I don't want it to compress. I don't mind if it pulls in a little bit 
because it's, you know, it's an armhole pulling in a little bit's okay, but I don't want it puckering. So um, I could swatch, and I think Karen mentioned that she did because it was like a lot of, that's a lot of stitches to get wrong. You know, because that's what you start with. You pick up three for four or two for three. And so you have to, that's where you begin. Um, I don't mind re-picking up stitches. I guess, uh, you know, and then I'd know pretty quickly whether it was starting to, whether the needle size was a problem or whether I needed to, um, whether I, my ratio was wrong. Anyway, um, I could try it on, probably wouldn't go very well over what I'm wearing. Um, yeah, anyway, I tried it on last last lesson, it, last lesson, <laughs> it's like I'm teaching, last podcast, but um, yeah, I'm not sure. It, it, it fits fine, like it, it totally fits fine. It's pretty snug around the bust but you know, it's super, super stretchy. So, and I decided I was not going to fight with having um, the yarn or the whole for all of those armholes having the work on needles. So I just put on waist yarn. So yeah, it does fit fine. It's pretty snug around the neck, but that, that is the style. And then I'm just up to that point where I'll start picking up for the edging. Um, but yes, I'm not sure whether I go three for four or two for three and whether I use the 2.5 or the 2.75 mil needle. So, Yes, but that's that's coming along and I'm very happy with that. That's 100% wool and wool is making me happy. Uh, my next work in progress, um, I guess I would call it four, but given C is coming off the needles, it's really only number three, um, is my Skimmer Socks. Uh, Skimmer Socks Revisited by Sheila Toy Stromberg. And I'm pretty sure this is some leftovers of Knit Picks Felici. So I would already finished the one that I showed last week and um, I'm almost finished the um, the second sock. So you do the um, uh, Judy's Magic Cast on and then you do the toe and a little bit more and then you leave the top of the foot on hold on a holder and that's pretty much almost all you're gonna do on the top of the foot. And then you knit the bottom of the foot and then you do a heel and a heel flap. And then I'm at the point now where I'm about to, this is all I've got left, which is plenty. I'm going to be picking up the stitches around the edging and um, that's on a two, this is a two, on a 2.25 millimeter needle and the ribbing is on a two millimeter needle. And I've got, um, where are they? I've got these, where will I put them? Um, probably hiding in here somewhere. These double pointed needles. Oopsie, okay, I'm not even gonna look for them. I hope I can find them. I've got some double pointed needles ready to go to um, on two millimeter double point needles because I've ordered the other needles from Sunspun, but, but I only just ordered them on, I can't remember, what's today, Thursday? I think I ordered them on Tuesday, so they haven't arrived yet. So yes, so that's coming on. That'll be finished by next week for sure. And I'll be casting on another pair because I, I just only, this is only my third pair and I really like these because they don't fall. I'm wear, I wear them all the time. So if I'm ever wanting to wear sneakers with no show socks, these are the ones I pick for pick and I'm not going to use the commercial ones anymore because I really don't, it's so uncomfortable when they slip into your, uh, underneath your foot and you've got all that fabric underneath the bottom of your foot and these ones have never fall well I haven't worn these ones yet but my other two pairs never fall down so the um I'm just having a bit of trouble picking finding yarn for it because most of my leftover skeins are just a bit too like this way 16 grams and most of my leftovers are like 30 grams so from like when I've made a full pair of socks so it's a bit of a bummer um I'm sort of struggling to find yeah, it seems crazy. How can you struggle to find 30 grams of sock yarn? But yeah, I just don't have a lot of that, that amount of leftovers. So anyway, I, I will find something and because I'm, yeah, I'll find something because um, I, I will start another one of these when this one's finished. Um, right, so that's my skimmer socks. Two more to go. Um, Exploration Station by Stephen West. I actually did do some. So uh, not a lot of rows, but I'm on the brioche section. I'll show you both sides. Now, I, this was my mistake though. I did a couple of rows, was feeling pretty good and thought, yeah, yeah, I've got this. And then I had a couple of glasses of wine and I don't got this. I just do not recommend um, drinking and brioche stitch. I just think it's a bad idea. Um, well, for me anyway, I'm not experienced enough in it. And also the other thing is like when you do a new pass, because um, I'll show you a picture of what had happened. 
So I knit, it's quite a lot of stitches here, right? I knit the whole right side and then the whole right side again. And then I turn my work and um, I had the neon peach slip covering every single one of those um, stitches, the, the reindeer stitches. So yeah, that was a real bummer. Um, and I had to undo stitch by stitch two rows um, anyway, I'm back on track now and I think I've got it. And also my recommendation there would be after you've done just like a few stitches, have a look on the other side and just make sure that you're slipping at the right spot and your slips aren't covering the, um, the, you know, the, the presentation column on the other side. That's definitely my tip. Anyway, um, yes, I'm happy with that and I'll be continuing on with that. I'm trying to sort of, you know, do a few rows a day. I am much better with brioche if I do a chunk at a time. So yeah, I might do that a bit this weekend. Yes, so that's, oh, sorry. <laughs> Exploration Station by Stephen West on a four millimeter needle using Tosh Merino Light in the colorways Neon Peach and Andler, which is the yarn that Stephen used and the colors that Stephen used. I'm using Graphite instead of El Greco. And then this one here was Reindeer in Stephen's Shawl, but I'm using um, Swish Yarns in a, like an apricot colorway. And um, I'm, so I'm pretty much following the original colors that Stephen used, because I like them. So, and I tried other colors and wasn't happy. So yeah, anyway, I am enjoying that. Um, and I do want to make another shawl, um, but I feel like I can only have one shawl on the needles at a time. Right, so uh, my last um, work in progress is my muscle bra hat. This is my 16th muscle bra. I'm using 3.25 millimeter needles and um, a fingering weight yarn, hedgehog fiber skinny singles in um, a colorway exclusive to Skein Sisters, my local yarn store. And I've blocked that um, because I wanted to see, you can see I've actually made quite a bit of progress there. I'm up to, um, I think about 16 and a half, 17 inches. Sorry, I just need a drink. And I think I've got only an inch to go and I'm ready to start the decreases. So yeah, really happy with that. I've got 136 stitches on the needles and that one should be done soon. I don't think I will start another muscle breast straight away because I've got the Sophie scarf on the needles. And I plan to do another skimmer socks. So yeah, I sort of think that fits that portable knitting bill. So I don't, I also don't have another yarn planned straight away for this. So I'll just wait until something pops in my brain for another muscle bra. Okay, so that's it for my works in progress. Um, friend from the vault. So this is um, a knit that I did earlier and it is, I'll stand up so you can see the pretty bit of the design. It's Novelli by Caitlin Hunter. And I used Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light in the colorway Hepburn and Ink is the navy and then Hedgehog Fibers Skinny Singles in the colorway Monet. And that was the uh, color that I used for my um, Sunset Highway, which was also by Caitlin Hunter. Anyway, that was a really great for me. I just think this is so, this was so pretty, this design here. Um, but I, I don't know, I think the thing, I don't wear this all that often. Um, Oh, actually, I'll just talk about it um, briefly. It's 33 inches across, so that's one inch of positive ease for me, and 12 and a half inches from the underarms, and the underarms are pretty tight up here. Not correct, not not uncomfortably tight, but just sort of right in a you know natural spot. So it's a um, boat neck, which I think that's probably one of the reasons I don't wear it that often. That's not really a, a style that I usually wear. Um, not sure why I don't know it doesn't it's not bothering me at my neck maybe I just don't find it that flattering um, but I like the trimming like I like I really like that and that was fun to knit I can't remember if it was bottom up or not actually I'll, I'll put in here whether it was bottom up or top down and um, also another reason I think that I didn't wear it that often is I made it pretty cropped um, so like here's the top of my jeans so I really needed high-waisted jeans and I think when I made it I didn't own any high-waisted jeans so now that I do um, I could see myself wearing it a little bit more but yeah maybe I think it's probably just the neckline because um, and so that goes all the way out here and then you pick up these stitches and that's actually a folded um, like what do you call it a folded folded hem um, yeah, like it's a really interesting construction. It was a really enjoyable knit. Um, 
you know what I think this would look really nice this design here would look really pretty at the bottom of a of a dress so like a um, there's a, a dress that Hiroko made years ago she took the pattern grapevine which is just a top and she turned it into a dress and she did like a panel of color work at the bottom of the dress I'll put a picture up at the bottom of the dress and at the bottom of the sleeves and it was just such a stunning look and I really liked it I favored it forever ago and I really wanted to um, you know not necessarily replicate it but re replicate the concept of having that that lovely um, color work band it reminds me of you know um, fabric where it has like a uh, at the bottom of it it has like a design on the bottom of the fabric I'm sure it's got a name um, I can't remember but that's sort of the the fabric has been made so that it's got like an edging anyway I think this would look really pretty at the bottom of a of a bottom of a dress that was all one color except for the trim maybe at the um, I don't know on the sleeves maybe but certainly at least on the bottom anyway um so this is my novelli by Caitlin Hunter and yeah I'm, it's quite nice I might start wearing it a little bit more but I think I really think it is the boat neck style that's just not my jam uh, okay so what has caught my eye this is an interesting one actually because I would not have thought this would have interested me this is the problem with I don't know if problems the right word petite knit she wears something anything and it looks amazing even if it's something that like you would have thought I would never so the December bow is the thing that she sort of I saw on Instagram recently and it just looks so pretty and so classy and yet I grew up in the 80s and it was just bows big bows in your hair everywhere and so I think I have a little bit of that kind of like a ooh factor on anything that was particularly 80s like shoulder pads and and big fluffy um, fringes and permed hair and like you know it's just like a oh and um, mum jeans and that kind of thing like they're just things that I initially go oh I'm not sure about that um, and yet it looks so pretty and so classy and so that's what I was thinking with this um, oh, the December boat I haven't bought the pattern but just looking at it it was interesting I went to people's projects and there's all these photos of the projects but almost no photos of it before it's been bowed if you know what I mean like it's all fit they're all finished but it's not like what did it look like along the way and usually in people's projects you see some like in progress photos anyway it but I, I'm having a thinking that actually it's probably not that different to the um, Sophie scarf so look I'm not averse to buying a pattern you know the designer's gone into the effort and there's probably a whole bunch of stuff in the pattern about the construction but I'm just not sure how many December bows I would make anyway I was thinking that maybe I could use the other half of this to make a bow am I crazy like is anybody else like this pattern or are they like there's only about a couple of hundred projects on Ravelry and it's been out for mm, maybe nine months so yeah I'm not Sorry, my husband's in the garage making a lot of noise. Hope you can't hear that. Um, he's brewing tomorrow. He brews beer and he's brewing tomorrow, so he's setting up for it. Anyway, I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Would anybody wear a bow? Like, I'm just not sure. Um, I guess I can make one, right? I don't have to make 50. Um, yeah, anyway, so that's what I was, that's caught my eye and I'm thinking maybe I would use the leftovers from this after I've made the Sophie scarf, which has about, if I do it with a narrower, it'll use about 50 grams. So that should be enough to do the other half if I choose to. So that's a, what has caught my eye. Um, now, uh, purchases and plans. I haven't bought any new, um, yarn or, um, patterns or anything, but I've sort of made some progress towards, and, and towards some of my plans in terms of moving them closer to actually getting on the needles. So with the, I'll start with a half and half rat. Um, I've wound up the balls and, and I swatched. So this is the half and half wrap from Pearl Soho. And I did like a little mini swatch because I was swatching for two reasons. I wanted to um, try out the I-cord edging and I wanted to try out the colors together. You know, they look, they look a lot nicer together on camera than in front of me. Um, my husband said he thought these looked quite nice together, particularly because like when you wear it, you're like, you're going to, you're only going to see like a little bit of 
that um, a little bit of the orange um, but the orange is so much more orange than I was expecting that sounds really silly but I was expecting more like a, a closer to a red um, closer to my um, my ranunculus in the colorway clementine so I'm just not the other thing I was thinking was whether I should be doing an eye cord cast on because so that's the I cord up this end and the I cord up this end but I'm and I just did a regular bind off but I was thinking maybe I would want to do an I cord cast on and an I cord bind off so that it I don't know people who've done that did you do an I cord cast on or a I cord bind off I should I'll have another look on people's Ravelry notes but I noticed a lot of people mentioned that they did the I cord edging but nobody talked about that I could remember and I called cast on a bind off. Anyway, it's very cute. I also wanted to just make sure I was happy just with the wrap and turn short rows, which I am actually. I, I'm not gonna, I wouldn't change them to German. They're pretty easy. They're also really, they're easy to spot as well. Um, although maybe obviously on a little swatch, they're easy to spot maybe on a, mm, not sure. Um, Cause the taking on and off of the marker is a bit of a pain in the pattern. Anyway, I'm not sh I'm still a little, the jury's out. People have sort of said, this is a lot of knitting. See, it just looks so much darker there. But in, in person, it's actually quite a bit lighter, this orange. Um, yeah, anyway, I'm not 100% on, on that. If I decide not to make it, I think I will just de-stash the yarn. So I've swatched, I do need to figure out, obviously I'll need to decide on the eye cord cast on right from the get-go. Um, so that will be, but I'm, I've made some movement towards it, still thinking, gee, it really looks quite nice like that. Oh, you know, but I don't live my life on camera. I live my life in person. Anyway, curious to hear your thoughts. So, do people like this or not? Uh, okay, so that's the half and half wrap. I've made a bit of progress there. So the kutar top. I, I'm, I'm just not feeling the non-wool fibres at the moment. I. I really quite enjoy knitting with them, but I'm struggling with the whole gauge thing. So I swatched the tin leaner for the kutar top and the the ball band on the tin leaner says, it recommends a three millimeter needle. Now the kutar top, the yarn that was used has a yardage of 50 grams is 180 meters. And the tin leaner is 50 grams is 220 meters. So it's substantially lighter and the recommended needle size for the kutar top is a 3.5 mil needle and i thought mm, given that the recommended needle for this is three mils i thought sorry <laughs> um i thought that's going to be a little bit too open so i split the difference swatched on a 3.25 mil needle i don't trust this swatch like i don't trust any of my linen or silk or anything swatches anymore um except wool i trust wool um, so prior to blocking, I got 20, uh, 30 stitches over four inches. After blocking, I got 27. So um, that would be like a 10% difference from whatever size I make on the kutar top because the gauge is meant to be 24 stitches. But I don't believe this. Like I bet, I bet I start this and it's gonna stretch out to 24 and I've chosen the largest size. So it's really causing me a bit of, um, you know, consternation on where, what to do. So, I mean, I feel like I should knit a whole, like a, a, like a full size um, tea towel out of this to be sure about the gauge. So, but I don't really want to knit a tea towel. So um, I do want to make the kutar top but I'm really not sure what size to cast on. So that's that's another issue for me with the kutar top. So I feel like I'm no closer to starting that um, than I was before. So even though I've made my swatch, because I just I'm just mistrustful of them now. So as a result, I'm I'm just feeling like moving more towards wool um, to have some success. So I think I might actually cast on the for pink velvet because I actually have that pattern and I have the yarn. I've this is Volmai's um, twin in the colorway Feldmouse, and this is Ching Fiber um, Suri Alpaca, which is the yarn that was recommended for the colorwork. And so 
I think I'm actually going to cast this on as my next sweater because um, I just feel like I want I want to win and I'll have this as my main sweater on the needles while I start to figure out um, like you know mess around with other like summer tops I mean I want to make summer tops right we're coming into summer it has been 34 degrees Celsius which is like I don't know 95 Fahrenheit for the last three days running today's a little bit cooler but it's been stinking hot so yeah I'm just thinking I do want to make some summer tops but um, I just feel like I want a sweater that's working while I mess around with other plans so that's pink velvet that is another plan that's coming up and so I'm, I'm closer because I've wound this yarn and I think I'm ready to cast that on uh, what else um, the other thing that I have wound up is the um, yarn for alpine bloom and I am going to do the different like I'm just going to do a, um, a twisted rib neckline and similar for the edging I don't, I don't really want to do the lace edging um, like it's pretty but it's just not really me and this has turned out to be a bit more yellow than I was expecting I thought it was a bit more pinky peachy but there's a fair bit of yellow in there so I'm not sure I, I mean there's plenty of contrast I think it will be pretty so um, I could do a swatch but I reckon I'll know pretty quickly that once I start the fair isle um, if I'm liking this and if I'm not I'll rip back and um, switch it out so that's that is upcoming I haven't bought that pattern yet but I think um, yeah I will and so that's Al Alpine Bloom by Caitlin Hunter another project that oh, I didn't I forgot to talk about this last week actually so this is my two balls of tin Lena in um, this sort of you know pastely pink colorway that I had purchased from um, from Wool & Co and I bought some silk mohair to go with it but they they were from two different dye lots so they sent didn't I, I asked them not to send it and so then I was like mm, okay what am I going to do with this but then I remembered that I had bought this Isia I uh, no not Isia La, La Bien Aime silk mohair from Sunspun Yarns when I was down there um, recently and I thought oh and so this that will go perfectly um, for a ranunculus so that's another one that I think I will um, start pretty soon because that's a tried and true for me I know I'm gonna have success in that I really like it it's really pretty and uh, yeah, I'd love to have a ranunculus in this sort of pastel pink color so that's another upcoming plan and the only other one that sort of um, I'm thinking about is the where is it where's my swatch oh where did I put it oh here it is um, yes the uh, anchor tea in this this is habu bamboo and i decided to do just a little bit of ribbing because the anchor tea has quite a bit of ribbing just to make sure i liked how that looked i'm not sure because the whole body is up here is like one by one rib and we talked about i talked last episode about how doing that in the round looks a bit nicer from the other side um, i'm not sure if, if i feel comfortable doing the whole yoke inside out like because there's a lot of increases and stuff and i'm not sure how they'll look from the wrong side so yeah I don't know I'm not sure if I'll do that but that just looks so lovely and got a really beautiful sheen to it so and uh, I haven't blocked that yet but as discussed I'm a little mistrustful but um, and that's another thing too like right now I think I'm getting 20 stitches which is the pattern gauge but it could blow out to 18 when I'm actually knitting the final project um, but you know a lot of it is ribbing so yeah maybe it'll be all right or I could just for safety's sake go to, down a needle size although they didn't really help with the theater top at all because <laughs> even one needle size down I still got 18 stitches over four inches I mean I guess I could just go down another needle size as well but at some point you're like you know this will be really unpleasant knitting if I'm knitting it on like a 3.25 millimeter needle anyway that's the anchor tee that I'm thinking about as well um, feeling a bit discouraged about my can you tell? I think I've mentioned that a few times. Anyway, or just a bit uncertain. And I like to go into my knitting projects feeling pretty confident. That's why we swatch, right? Mm -hmm. So that you're like, yes, I know what I'm doing. And when I do all of these stitches on the needles, I know it's gonna be the right size. I can see why some people just feel like I just don't want to knit garments at all. You know, you, you have a few, um, a few failures in a row um, and it could just be a bit of a drag. 
Anyway, so that's the um, anchor tee that I think I will do. Um, what else? Um, I've got a few other ones that I had planned to make, but they're sort of, I won't mention them again because they're not like, they're not close to actually being made, whereas these ones are getting a bit closer. Uh, what else? I feel like there was something else. Right, the other, um, there was something else. The Soho top, which I really want to make by Kadri, and I'm using the recommended yarn, and this is Pearl Soho um, Sweetgrass, which is like an alpaca cotton blend. And this was really bizarre. Before blocking it, I was getting um, 21 and a half stitches over four inches. After blocking it, I got 22 and a half, so it's like a shrank. So I don't understand that. It's Garda, I was not expecting it to shrink. The row gauge didn't change at all, it's still 39 rows. So yeah, I'm not really sure what to do with that one. Again, I mean, it's cotton alpaca, there's no wool. So I don't really wanna go up a needle size, like I quite like that fabric, I think that's, and I also feel like, you know, this swatch fine, but in the whole body, is it gonna end up being, you know, larger? So um, the other thing that I was, as I was researching this pattern, the um, straps are quite narrow and I definitely wanna make sure that I, my bra strap's covered. So um, a few people cast on a couple of extra stitches. I think it's only meant to cast on like three stitches. So maybe if I cast on five and then also um, it's got quite, quite a, not a complete boat neck, but boat neck-ish, you only make do a few rows and then you, um, join so I think what I might do is just increase a little bit more and then join so it just drops down just a little bit more I mean I like the style um, but um, like it looks nice on the in the pattern but maybe for me I might just like it just a teeny bit down so still almost boat neckish but not completely just slightly dropped so um, I feel like I just want to ignore my swatch and go I bet, I bet you end up 20, like, cause that's the pattern gauge. I bet you end up being 20 stitches. And I bet you're gonna lie to me and you're, you're 22 and a half now, but oh, when I do a whole thing, you're gonna be 20. So, uh, I mean, obviously cotton alpaca is quite different, um, but yeah, it's not wool, right? So anyway, sorry, I, f I feel like I'm, everything I've, not everything I've mentioned, but a lot of things I've mentioned have been problem, 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 problem. And that's not, that's not very inspiring, is it? But hopefully once I've fixed it, or at least it's like, it's an issue, I'm working on it, I'm, um, yeah, and I'm not ignoring it and charging on ahead. I'm going to that, you know, I'm, I'm planning and thinking and yeah, but I haven't got resolution. But I guess maybe that's, I don't know, is that the good thing about the podcast is that like I've hit a, hit a wall, we all hit walls in our knitting and what I'm trying to do to, you know, break down that wall or go around the wall or figure out a solution to, you know, jump over the wall. Um, anyway, that's that's where I'm at with that. That's it, enough for plans, but I do feel like it helps when you're hitting walls to have some knitting that is, you know, um, a success. And even though this, like this one's, you know, I'm finding success in at the moment, I'm still not hitting a wall, but in I'm second guessing what to do. Um, so it's sort of, you know, I've sort of put it aside for a second until I figure out what, and I think the knitting that I enjoy the most is when I just knit. Um, but I do want garments and garments involve planning and, and roadblocks and you just have to accept it. Just like ripping out. If you, if you never want to rip out your knitting, well, you may as well not knit because you have to accept that that's just part of it. Like it's just part of knitting, right? Um, just like if you're a, if you sew, you own a seam ripper because you know, you're always gonna to have to deal with that at some point. So just, you know, part of life, I guess. It's not all, not all, life's not linear. It's not all forward progress. Um, yes, enough on the philosophy. So I'm up to my hidden whips basket. Um, I'm not pulling anything else out of it, but I'm coming back to the Carnaby skirt, which was also a problem because as much as I love this color, I have that whole big um, dark splotch from where I dyed it. So I have purchased this eggplant dye. I'm hoping that that's dark enough, that that will, and I still need to buy a 
that I'm having the same thing that really blows me out um, I have to buy a pot that is going to be large enough to put this in and I'm wondering I'm wondering if from dyeing this maybe the yarn was like sitting against this and sort of who knows I could just be making that up so I'm not going to mess with this if I dye it with this I'm not going to put anything else in the pot I'll just use this and I'll get a much bigger pot and um, and dye this up hopefully but I've still um, I haven't I haven't been to a thrift shop yet that'll be in the holidays so that's my um, carnaby skirt that I need to fix hopefully by um, you know, hopefully sometime in the holidays right so I think that's that's it for where I'm at for my knitting. I haven't done any other craft, um, although hopefully I will soon. Holidays are coming up. Uh, hopefully that hasn't been too, hopefully I haven't discouraged you. I hope your knitting's going well. Um, so, and I'm curious to hear in the comments if people um, have any thoughts about the, the roadblocks that I'm hitting with, with, you know, if you've got more experience with knitting with, um, you know, regularly knitting with cotton or linen or, um, and you've just noticed, yeah, this just happens, right? Like you know it all grows um, and I definitely I do remember that with my cotton things over time and with wear things that had like a 22 stitch gauge have moved out to 20 so that kind of thing um, and also what you think about you know my little my swatches whether you think did you do an I if you've done the half and half did you do an I cord edging or cast on and what do you reckon about those colors mm, okay um, they're very they're opposite of the color wheel aren't they um, yeah, blue and orange. Right, so that's it for the content part of the show. Um, thanks for watching. I'm just gonna do some personal stuff at the end now. Right, so last week I recorded on Wednesday and we went and watched this local production of School of Rock because there was um, some students from my school and a couple of teachers as well. And it was fantastic. It was so good, it was really late. Started at eight o'clock at night and didn't get home till after 11 so we were pretty tired but it was so good it was so worth going and yeah I just love um going out and watching musical theater and everyone really enjoyed it so that was that was great fun um it was also really nice for two of my kids Alex and Zach because they've both been in musicals and um and I, like I think it's nice like school musicals it's kind of nice to know that there's like even after you leave school, there's local productions. You don't have to be, this is your you know, profession and doing it in the city. There are smaller local productions that you can be part of. Um, yeah, so um, what else? I, um, on the weekend, I taught at the yarn shop. So I had four classes, um, uh, my socks class and a um, finishing technique techniques class so picking up stitches and stuff so that those went really well um i just wanted to say thank you to margaret who's a viewer who came to my socks class and she bought me a peppermint crisp so thank you margaret i've saved it so i can show it and i'm gonna have that this evening as a treat um yeah so they were really lovely classes and yeah i just i really enjoyed it. it's very tiring like six hours of teaching in one day is pretty like i'm pretty wrecked by the time i get home um but it's so enjoyable and i just get so much out of it um and then what else has happened um my son zach who's my youngest he turned 16 on monday and so we just went out for dinner we, we had dinner here on sunday night like you know um big I fill it and salad which was really nice and then we went out on Monday night um, at, for his actual dinner um, yeah oh, and he, he uh, did his L's test so um, here in Australia when you turn 16 you have to go to like the DMV and do a test an online test and he passed he got them all right and he's had his first little go in the car and because he plays Mario Kart he just thought he'd be like get in the car no worries but of course if you've ever been with a learner driver, it's like, and then like, and you're like, oh. So we just did like to the end of the cul-de-sac and back, and that's it. And I think he was like, oh, okay, this is harder than I thought it would be. So um, this weekend, he's gonna go with um, my husband to the local parking lot um, near the golf course and just do a whole bunch of, you know, driving when there's not a lot of, um, you know, just familiarizing with how the, you know, how sensitive the accelerator and brake is. There's so many things that you don't realize. Like he went, I could see he was about to use two different feet, one for the brake, one for the accelerator. And I was like, no, 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 one foot. That's, you don't need both feet. And um, yeah, just so much of like, even where the indicators are and yeah, just so much of driving is automated. 
Anyway, so that's sort of new for us now, um, is um, <laughs> another year of, of vlogbook hours and because you have to get to 120 hours to, um, to be able to sit your test. So yeah, that's, um, that's what's been happening. Um, and also it's almost, um, so today's my day off, tomorrow is the last day of school for the term and then I've got school holidays for two weeks. So, and we've got cards tonight and then Zach's working, he's at KFC now, he's got a shift tonight at nine o'clock. So um, he's now starting to get regular shifts. That will be great for getting his hours up, particularly his night driving hours, but he's no way ready to drive half an hour from like his work to home. <laughs> um, but it will be good once he's like, once he's in the rhythm of driving and stuff, that will be, um, that will be good to get his hours up. Um, so my plans for these holidays, um, I do, I'm starting to teach extension two next term, which involves like higher level maths of complex numbers and mechanics and um, proof and a whole bunch of like math that I haven't taught in, oh, let me think, 20 years, 15 years, 20 years, yeah, long time. So yeah, 20 years since I last taught that and it's been a new course since then. So I'll be spending most of these holidays um, you know, reviewing. I've been, I, in saying that, I've, I've shadowed other Extension 2 teachers over the last couple of years and I've been going in like with the students and doing all the questions and, you know, but like, you know, I, I've got to write an assignment for it and, you know, I just want to make sure that I'm completely 100% ready to go um, on, you know, first day next term. So I'll be spending quite a bit of time on that these holidays. And also, um, I'm in there, I'll hope to get some sewing done. I'd like to do those bags, the town bag and the field bag at least, and maybe one garment. Uh, that's probably a bit ambitious, but you know, anyway, uh, I wanted, uh, I always have, you know, I wanna do this, I wanna do that. There's so many things I wanna do. So I also wanna do some editing with, you know, like get familiar with Adobe Premiere Pro and be able to, you know, have this channel be a little bit better edited. Um, I, what else do I wanna do? Oh, I'm going, I do am going to go on some like catch up with friends. I'm going on a walk with my friend Amy on Saturday. Oh, and reading. I do enjoy reading. I've, I've, um, my work has just started this book club and um, we're going to be reading the, a life, oh, not a life, we're reading Life Worth Living. And this is actually, um, it's from a, an undergrad course that Yale, um, these guys, I guess, Yale professors, and they teach this and this book has come out of that course. So, and I've just read the forward and yeah, it's really interesting. Like there's, there's space in my life for light reading, but I actually also really quite like, um, I don't know whether you call it self-improvement reading or just reading that sort of, you know, um, challenges my thinking. And yep, yeah, so I've started that and it's, I think there's like 15 chapters. So over the two weeks holidays, if I, um, if I read a chapter a day, so the forward, I have to say, I don't love this, right? The forward is 34 pages long. So, and that's all the Roman numerals. And then chapter one is page one. And I feel like I've read 35 pages already. I wanna be past page one. I don't know if that's just like a mental thing, but I sort of feel like ripped off. Um, anyway, <laughs> I'm about to start page one today. So I've read the forward yesterday and I'd like to, one of the nice things, if my, re if my knitting is pretty straightforward, um, I can knit and read at the same time. So as long as I've got sort of on a, I'm either on a Kindle or I've got the book sort of propped up, um, yeah, that is quite handy. So yeah, so anyway, I hope to read um, about uh, a chapter a day. So I'll report on how that's going next week. Anyway, sorry, it's getting quite long. Um, uh, thanks so much for watching and for being here and yeah, I'll see you next week. Bye. Hello. Oh, you are soft.